Today we're going to take a look inside of a Yamaha 400S speaker. This is part of a uh, 400i system. For whatever reason, the tweeter on this speaker is not working. So I switched the uh, inputs back and forth to verify that it's not a, an external problem. But this speaker, I just picked it up at a pawn shop and it does have an issue with the tweeter. So I wanted to see what's inside of it before I uh, talk to them about how to remedy this, just out of curiosity, I guess. Because I'm going to keep this system either way. So I just took the four Phillips screws holding the grill on. And there's uh, a few speakers through the front that we need to remove. And then there will be some additional speakers in the back, or screws in the back rather. You could use a uh, impact gun if you wanted, but I would could be risky. So I just go the slow way. I'm not going to take the speaker element out. We're just going to take a look at what's going on. get it out. Looks like there's five screws on the front. So these speakers look like they were pretty well cared for, like they are probably in someone's kind of home studio space. So I was kind of surprised that they had an issue when I got them. I'm just using this in a, a garage just to listen to music. So I like they're a full amplifier and everything in them. So I just bought an external AM FM tuner and I also have a, a preamp that I can use with it. They still make this uh, speaker system, but they make it as a BT now, because this system has a uh, is set up for old iPods and iPhones. One, two, three, four. So I don't want those to go into the speaker element. Let's see which one didn't come out. Probably need to disconnect this TRS connector. Could probably use a socket on it, but we don't want to damage it. Alright. Looks like there's four screws in the back up here now. I'm gonna try to leave as many of the connectors for the uh, <clears throat> storage space alone. I can just buy uh, a speaker element inexpensively for this. I just forget about talking to the pawn shop. Might be two more in the front here. Underneath the handle.
So there's a powered mixer that you probably know about already that's separate from these. So these speakers aren't powered per se. There's the 4 ohm speakers. I don't know if they're 150 watts each. The system is supposedly rated at uh, 200 watts per channel. You're supposed to be one and a half times your speaker wattage for your amp wattage. I don't know if they followed that or not. We're close. Something holding me back over right here. There's some electronics attached to the back of this. Let's see if we can get the camera separated from the tripod. Take a look at that. So I assume that's some kind of filter or something. That's a, a big tweeter. There's some more electronics down. Uh, at the connector. Can't really see it. Um, so, I'm going to disconnect these uh, wires and get this thing separated. Alright, we got it apart. So it didn't need to take off this uh, little red connector to get the uh, back off. So in the back, there's this circuit here, which I assume is a filter. And uh, there's just a little PCB board for the uh, TRS connector. Now, uh, so there's always a possibility it's a bad wiring in here or a bad circuit board or connection or something. But in this case, I set my multimeter to ohms. When I put it across the terminals on the uh, woofer, it's like 3.7 ohms or something, so more or less four ohms. My leads are a little bit. When I put it across the tweeter, I'm not getting anything. So this tweeter is dead by the looks of it. So I'll have to see what they're worth. Hoping it's something reasonable. I've never bought Yamaha parts before. That's the woofer there. YE273A0. And then the uh, tweeter. YE271A0. So uh, I don't know if these things are repairable or not, or how much of it you need to buy. I bought ter Paradigm speaker before and they give you like a kit and you only replace parts of it, like you keep the magnet and everything and just replace the uh, coil. So I guess we'll find out how Yamaha does this. So I guess I'm just gonna put this back together do some investigating and see if I'm ordering parts or if I'm returning it. But I like the concept of this. Like I paid 500 bucks for the uh, pair of speakers and the uh, stands and it's worth about double that I guess from what I can tell. Then I bought a little AM FM tuner there for $15 at the pawn shop. And uh, on top of that I've got like I said a fancy preamp that I bought that uh, I was planning to hook up to this, but I guess that's on hold for now. Construction looks like the uh, case is sealed where everything goes in. Not sure what that is about there. But it's more or less uh, a sealed container, except for where the uh, ports go out. So I guess we'll wrap this up. I'm not sure if I'll have the repair as part of this video, or depends how things go. So I'll just say thank you for watching for now and we'll see how it ends up. Some time has passed and, has, and I have picked up some new speakers. So it turns out that the uh, compression driver on these speakers is actually made by uh, Celestion. It's a CDX1-1070. It's a 12-watt uh, a compression driver. So Celestion makes a few other compression drivers as well. Like these are cheap. In Canadian dollars, they're like $30 they're disposable. So I could have just bought one 
for 30 bucks and toss it in. So there was really no point talking to the uh, pawn shop. And their receipt was that it's, uh, they just give you an in-store refund. So I decided rather than buying one replacement, I would get some uh, 25 watt compression drivers. So these are Celestion, have a look on the box, CDX 1-1425. And so this is a 25 watt. They also make a 20 watt. So this, uh, the response on these or sensitivity is two decibels higher. The 20 watt are two decibels lower than these. And uh, what I noticed was that when you look at the graph for these speakers here, they're not very linear. Like from uh, their low to the high, there's a lot of like ridges. Whereas these ones have a much more like linear response. So I thought I'd go with these. But when you look at the drawing for the, uh, the block diagram for this 400i or 400s system, you'll see that there is like an SP-EX, which I assume is a speaker equalizer in the system. So it's possible that the mixer fixes the response of the speaker. So I don't know what the end result is going to be. I know that the compression driver is going to be louder for certain. So basically to take this off, the uh, red is yellow. And the uh, negative is blue. And uh, another thing when I picked the speaker was like you can get a ton of different options for speakers. Basically you need a two M6 screws on a three inch center or circle if you're going to be looking. But I thought, well, I might as well just stick with Celestion if Yamaha thought they were good. Although obviously there's problems with them. So I'm not going to be able to do any like uh, testing other than by ear to tell you if this was a mistake or not. Just looking at the threads on these screws, see if they had some kind of Loctite or something on them. That first one didn't come out great. So if you uh, were using these speakers to make money, like you could just keep one or two of these around. And it, obviously you wouldn't change it in the middle of a gig. Well, I guess you could. If you're concerned about changes in sound, then you could just stick with that speaker. They're readily available. Like I said, they're just disposable. I don't know how many hours are on the speaker. I don't know how loud it's being driven. I don't know much about anything about it. So that's the uh, adapter plate that goes on here. The speaker I bought is like a quarter inch deeper compression driver. So I just positive over here. Just want to make sure I don't mix this up. Positive like that. Yeah. And I'm gonna change both of them. I've already mixed myself up. Alright, I think we're good. fits from that perspective. The uh, connectors are a bit of a different angle. I'm going to try to go with how they are. I'm not going to modify them. Yeah. Certainly a better magnet on this one. And another thing you need to look at is like the uh, output. So this is a one inch. So you'll need to do that so that it fits onto the horn correctly. 
So I found that from Celestion there was essentially three choices. One being the original speaker, this one at 25 watts, and then there was one, another one in the middle at 20. And I'm hoping that I can put this back in, otherwise I'll be crying. Because like I said, it's a quarter inch deeper and I did not. You could have put like a chunk of putty on here and try to put it together to see how much space there is. But I did not. And these are much more expensive speakers. And you can buy rebuild kits for these where the other ones are toss out. Well, I see some screws on it. Looks like I can separate the coil. I'll probably do that in a minute. Okay, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff here, I just want to place the uh, back housing on it, I hope it fits. Yeah, it squished the wiring right down. All right. So I think it's going to work. I'm just going to have to move this a little bit and massage things. I think we're going to be okay. So I'm just going to stop filming, get this thing put together, and then we'll have an update after that. We are running into difficulties. So it turns out that the, uh, the dome on the back of this uh, compression driver is interfering with the uh, installation of the uh, back part. So I'm going to need to come up with a solution for weather stripping around this so that the uh, base ports still work correctly. I had to bend the uh, electrical connectors over without bending the actual connector on the speaker because that wouldn't work out very good. So. Uh, then I took this uh, compression driver apart and it's really annoying that they don't just sell a repair for it like I've done in the past, right? Like all you need is this circuit board to replace this thing because it just doesn't have continuity across it. So that is kind of bothersome to me that you can't get that part and uh, fix it. So somewhere the circuit's broken in here but I can't fix it because there's no part to do it and it's too small to do it by hand in my opinion maybe a professional could repair it but not for a thirty dollar driver um so i'm kind of stuck here right now so i ended up breaking off a boss right here trying to tighten this up so that's when i realized i really needed to stop and forcing this thing together was not going to work out so i guess to play it safe i would recommend you just put in the original Celestion compression driver and then you won't have any trouble putting it back together but uh, I'm gonna have to make this work because I spent a good chunk of money on these drivers <laughs> hopefully I don't mess up the acoustics of this uh, pair of speakers so I guess that's where we're gonna wrap up by like putting it together is quite simple right you just put half together on the one side and half on the other side Make sure you don't forget your wires and uh, you're good to go. So I guess I will finish putting it together and then we'll turn it on and listen to it. But that's pretty much it for the repair of this uh, speaker. Now I'm making progress digging my way out of this hole. So basically what I did was I took some M6 uh, nuts here and just used some RTV to space out the uh, two halves of the cabinet. And that seems to give me uh, enough thickness. 
So I'm just going to try to put this back together, get the uh, wires clipped on onto here as well, and uh, put the two halves together. It's going to leave a gap all the way around, but if it sounds like it's working good and it's not like muffling the compression driver by having it pushed up against the back of the uh, cabinet, I think uh, what I'll do is I'll come back with some black silicone and fill in the uh, gap around this. And then if I need to go back in again, I'll have to cut it open with a knife. But I'll save what I've spent on these speakers and hopefully have uh, an adequate solution. I'm happy to report it was a success. Things were certainly kind of concerning there for a minute for me. But uh, it's all good. So this speaker here, it's open up about uh, an eighth of an inch compared to the edge of the uh, other speaker. So I'll have to go over this with some caulking after I run these for a while and get comfortable with uh, how things sound. So this speaker is 25 watts versus uh, 12 for the other compression driver. They sound fine together side by side. I am going to change the other one as well in uh, later. But I've only been running the uh, power up to uh, two, just kind of listening to music on my uh, iPhone, I guess it is. I don't know. I just I bought it because it works in my couple of different vehicles and then it works with this thing as well. Um, so I think that's good. So if you want to double your uh, power capacity on your compression drivers, you can use those. It is uh, more than just a, a simple swap of the compression driver because of the depth. But if you open up the uh, cabinet a little bit, you will be okay. Another thing I did was I bought different speaker cables. So the 400i comes with uh, this kind of molded connector here. And they're long. I'm not sure how long they are in the literature. It says it. but uh, So I, did, I bought some uh, Yorkville speaker wire instead. So it's uh, 18 2 It's got the uh, phono jack connector on it. They're uh, split cable. I don't know if we can get any closer to look at that or not. But just should you choose to uh, change the uh, cable, you certainly can. So it looks a bit tidier and it's not super long. It'll still fit in the back of the storage compartment there as well. So I think uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Like I said, it was kind of going bad there for a minute. So I'm going to do another video on the setup of how I'm using the system. So uh, if you want to take a look on my channel, you can find some more information there. So thank you for watching.